We head into week six of the NFL season on a 134, 110, and 7 run here on the Power 5. Lots of interesting matchups to break down for Sunday. Of course, I got five free plays for you today. Two totals, two sides, and a teaser. You can always go ahead and let me know what you think of these down in the comments section below. And if you agree, don't be afraid to smash that like button. Here we go. Number one, let's start early over in London with the Jaguars and Bears. I like the under in this matchup. Full candor, I liked the idea of teasing the Jags as well, but that was before they got bet down to plus one. That's the current price as of this recording. Of course, the Jags, no strangers to playing on the other side of the pond. This will actually be the first of back-to-back -back games over there for Trevor Lawrence and company. Speaking of Lawrence, I know he and this Jacksonville offense are off a big game against Indianapolis. It was their first one of the season last week, but I do not see that success sustaining itself here against an excellent Bears defense, which is number one in the NFL in EPA against the pass. At the same time, not sure I totally want to buy in yet with a Bears team that has not been favored outside of Chicago since 2021. This is the first time. Uh, rookie quarterback playing overseas. I know Caleb Williams has looked good the last couple of weeks, but still, he's a rookie. Uh, I think this is a relatively low-scoring affair, primarily thanks to that Bears defense, which I spoke of earlier. I know the number's been bet up throughout the week. But that's giving us some good value on a pair of offenses that should regress after both put up season highs in points last week. So under 44 and a half in the early game over in London. Another total I like for Sunday. The over 47 in Cardinals Packers. Again, punching back against the market a little bit here. Now, when it comes to playing totals in Cardinals games this season, I said this before the start of the year. It's always going to be over or pass for me. I, I really like how Kyler Murray and this offense have looked going back to last season. This has been a top 10 offense since Murray returned last season. But the defense in Arizona it remains very bad. Uh, keep in mind, only one of Arizona's five games this season have seen fewer than 47 total points scored. Do not be fooled by that second half shutout against the 49ers last week. The Cardinals defense in the first half allowed 23 points. Now, Will the Packers score 23 and a half here? I don't know about that, but I think they're going to score more than 23 for the game. That is for sure. Expect Jordan Love to have a big game this week. The Cardinals are allowing the second highest completion percentage in the league right now, right around 72%. As for the Packers defense, yes, it is much improved. And I said it was going to be much improved after they got rid, after they got rid of the hideous Joe Barry. Uh, one of the two touchdowns the Rams scored on the Packers last week was actually a pick six. But th that's a banged-up Rams offense that's really thin at receiver and offensive line. The Cardinals offense, we know about Murray. Like I said, he's not a, just a threat with his arm, but with his legs. Really tough to contain him. The number's too low here. Packers have already allowed 30-plus twice this season. All right, let's look at some sides. So that's the over again in Packers-Cardinals. Uh, let's look at some sides for Sunday. Titans money line. This should be around minus 145 against the Colts. There is a massive edge defensively here for Tennessee. They are actually allowing a league low 243.8 yards per game. While Indianapolis, they are allowing a league worst 419.2 yards per game. I mean, the Colts just gave up 37 to the Jaguars, for crying out loud. I don't really care if it's Anthony Richardson or Joe Flacco at quarterback for the Colts because the Colts' offense is going to be without Jonathan Taylor, the, the stud running back, and, and that's a big deal. Look, Flacco... He's old and he's turnover prone. Richardson, this is a guy who can complete a pass to a receiver on the moon and then the next play misses the broad side of a barn. I think I've recycled that joke a couple times here on the show. Nevertheless, the point stands. The Titans are coming off a bye. The Titans have won eight straight uh, times when coming off a bye. That is the second longest active streak in the league. Let's make it nine straight. F Once again, that is money line on the Titans. Uh, in the 4 p.m. time slot, I like the Cowboys getting three at home against the Lions. Yes, I know Detroit is coming off a bye, and Dallas has major injury concerns uh, that they're still dealing with on the defensive side of the ball with Lawrence and Parsons, but the Cowboys should have won by a lot more over Pittsburgh last Sunday night. Really dominated that game statistically. 445 to 226 edge in total yards. Dallas only ends up with 20 points, though, due to three turnovers, but at home, facing a weaker defense this week, I think Dak Prescott's going to play cleaner. Uh, Dal the Cowboys are surprisingly 0-2 straight up at home this season. I say surprisingly because coming into the year, they'd won 16 in a row in Jerry World uh, in the regular season. Of course, they did lose to Green Bay uh, in the playoffs last year. Prescott, 
so they've technically lost three straight at home after a 16-game win streak. But Prescott, he has not closed as a home dog of three or more since 2018. It's been a long time. We're a Less gray in the beard, less gray in the hair back in 2018 for years truly. This is just a numbers play for me. I make the game closer to a pick em. Let's take the points with Dallas. Okay, we're going to wrap things up now with the teaser. Let's go with the Broncos up to plus nine and the Jets on Monday Night Football up to plus eight and a half. Two divisional home underdogs here. Denver, of course, a nice 5% winner for yours truly last week against the Moribund Raiders. They did lose the battle statistically, though, did the Broncos. But this week, I just think the luxury of them only needing to stay within one possession against what is still a banged-up Chargers team, too good to pass up. Uh, this game is also uh, has a very low total. Very low. 35.5. So points figure to be at a premium. The Broncos have the number two scoring defense in the NFL. Yes, I know the Chargers are number one in that department, but being able to tease through the key numbers of three and seven, that's huge in a game that just, again, figures not to have a lot of scoring. I think Denver stays within nine here and then you go to Monday night same thing with the Jets big story obviously is the coaching change you would expect that to provide some kind of spark uh Bill's offense could be without leading receiver uh Shakir the Jets defense has not been the problem at all it was not the problem under Robert Sala so come on Aaron Rodgers time to do something under the bright lights for what it's worth the Jets last two losses have both been decided in the final minute. So it's not like they're losing bad. So getting eight and a half as part of a teaser is the smart play here. Let us now run back through the Power Five for you in case you forgot anything, forgot, didn't jot it down. Number one, under 44 and a half in Jags Bears. That is the early game over in London. Number two, over 47 in Cardinals Packers. Number three, Titans money line against the Colts. Should be around minus 145. Uh, I would not lay the three for the record. Uh, in the 4 p.m. time slot, I like the Cowboys getting three at home against the Lions. That is your fourth play. And number five, a teaser, Broncos plus nine, along with Jets plus eight and a half. You can let me know what you think of those selections uh, down below. Again, if you already haven't done so, and don't be shy about dropping your best bets for Sunday in the comment section as well. Always enjoy reading those. And you can't forget, Mark Zinno and I are partnering up this week. And Mark and I, of course, do the morning wager here on Wager Talk TV every Monday through Friday. And you can get the next three days of service from both of us for only $69. That's right. By one three-day all-access pass, you get the other guy free of charge. Mark and I were combined 10 and 1 last Saturday and Sunday. Getting a three-day all-access pass ensures you get all of our college football all of our NFL, all of our MLB for the weekend. So, uh, if you're not convinced yet, that's a great deal. We'll check this out. I'm number one in football this season at Wager Talk. Combined 29 and 14 record in NFL and college. That's 68% winners, up 41.1 units. Last weekend, I was a perfect 3-0 and in college, including best bets on A&M, Texas A&M, that is, and Washington. Then I went 2-0 and in the NFL on Sunday, including that 5% max bet on Denver. I'm now number one at Wager Talk in the NFL over the last 30 days, 10-3 and three this season with sides. My top two NFL sides are locked and loaded at my page right now, wt.buzz slash bp. Don't forget about that three-day all-access. That's going to do it for Sunday's edition of the Power 5. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, go ahead, smash that like button. And until next time, let's cash some tickets.